So cost is also we have one such parameter that must be kept in mind. Uh, we have kept in that and uh, proposed the system. So our proposed system for the acute myeloid leukemia project is so we have used convolutional neural networks. So this topic comes under uh, deep learning. So this convolutional neural networks automatically learn the features from a blood sample images and by performing some techniques like data augmentation and pre-processing and uh, transfer learning techniques we can enhance the accuracy and reliability also so basically uh, using these cnn we, we can uh, overcome those uh, existing system drawbacks and we can get some accurate and automated thing like so here no one is involving like we just have to run the program and we just get the output right? we have to give the input and the model is already trained so model is already trained with the help of already a huge data set like uh, some patients will be there right so that data set with that data set it is already trained so it almost it gives us a correct uh, output so it's a efficient one so we think like um, so there is a lot of uh, clinical uh, workflows might be reduced there so no one uh, is involving like hematologists and pathologists and all. So time also, we can just uh, reduce the time uh, and cost is also one such parameter we have considered. Right? So it doesn't need uh, too, much, too much cost. So our proposed system represents some promising result, promising approach for this AML detection using CNN. Sorry. So in medical imaging and cancer diagnostics. So these are the advantages, some of the advantages of proposed system. So automated feature learning, and we'll be getting uh, automated feature learning, right? So we already proposed, we have already trained the model. So a model will be trained by, it learns automatically. It learns features, what are the relevant features are there uh, from the input image. So it does uh, feature extraction automatically without need for manual one, and higher accuracy and reliability. So CNNs are basically developed for image recognition tasks and it is hugely used in this image uh, field. So accuracy is undoubtedly uh, will be getting best accuracy and reliable. we can easily trust them and real time capabilities. So these images are processed in real time. So they will be quickly and time detected. So adaptability, we can just fine tune the model and we can update the model with the data uh, as we go on. Right? So that says continuous improvement. And uh, so these are basically functional improvement uh, requirements for the project pre-processing, uh, which pre-processing in a sense, we have to reduce some noise. We have to normalize the image. We have to resize them. And because required uh, images might be in some raw format. And we have to get into the format, which is amenable for, uh, amicable for uh, our model. Then feature extraction. So the system must extract the relevant features from the uh, whatever the images that are already pre-processed. So like features might be like morphology, texture, intensity, and what, whatever that uh, whatever that is required to differentiate whether the image is cancer or normal image. So classification. At the end of the day, uh, we have to detect whether the cancer is present or not. So it comes under classification task and result pre presentation. So whatever the results are. Uh, uh, presented, they must be clear and in interpretable results, such as binary classification output. So we have said it is uh, present or not. That's it. And next, these are some non-functional requirements. So undoubtedly, any machine learning or deep learning problems, uh, non-functional requirements will be accuracy. System should achieve higher higher accuracy with minimal false positive and false negative rates results to ensure the reliability outcome and performance. So our system must be able to process the images in a, such a manner that it must support the uh, real time like uh, clinical practice. But there's scalability system should be scalable. Like uh, we have to, it should be able to support the variable size of data sets from small scale to large scale. And it should be able to handle the increasing data volumes also because data is not always constant. Data is always getting uh, increased, right? And reliability. So system should be at the end of the day, the user must trust it. So reliable, it should not be failure, even though some failures might occur. Uh, see, failures are not always uh, avoidable. They're always uh, unpredictable, right? So uh, we have to think about it. We have to keep it in the mind, reliability also. Then this is a use case diagram. We have to upload the sample image. So basically the image is a single slide blood cell image. That means 
uh, it is uh, first uh, the technician takes the blood sample image from the uh, patient and he uh, puts it under the microscope and it is examined under microscope and whatever the picture that he examines that image will be called a single slide blood cell image and it will be fed into uh, like it will be fed into a system like in a jpg format and then uh, it whatever the model we have trained cnn model it takes the input and it does some feature uh, extraction uh, by the use of convolutional layers, max pooling, and fully connected layers, where every neuron is connected to every uh, other neuron, like previous neuron, and it just uh, it just performs some classification task and just dis displays the results. So user can see the final result. Then, so this is the output screen. So here a user has to upload an image for cancer detection. First, he has to choose a file. When he chooses a file basically here i have selected one cancer image so and then you have to click on upload then the result comes like this cancer if it is a cancer uh if it is predicted as cancer again if we can upload another image also we have we can try it we can upload another image then we have to choose an image i have selected here uh, normal image normal image in a sense the image which is uh, other than the cancer images right so for our understanding purpose, I have differentiated these images because as a system, it, uh, it doesn't know anything, right? As a user, we have to differentiate. I mean, as a performer, we have to know uh, what are the cancer image and what is the normal images. So, so I have selected normal image and I've uploaded it and the result comes like it is a normal. So to conclude, <clears throat> this project has successfully developed a deep learning based system for detecting acute myeloid leukemia cancer. So using some deep learning techniques. So by, the, by using uh, convolutional neural networks and extensive training on large data set of AML images. And it has presented, it has demonstrated the potential use of this deep learning in uh, contributing of this healthcare in early detection of this cancer, a critical type of cancer, which is uh, a deadly and aggressive form. And findings of these projects are where so they highlight higher accuracy and uh, in detecting the AML cancer. So this would significantly improve the patient outcomes by enabling the early detection, early intervention and treatment. So this should save the uh, patient lives as much as possible. And it is a great help for healthcare providers in accurately identifying the AML cases and reducing this misdiagnosis. And uh, so this early detection of like stages right there will be some stages in cancers so we have to detect them at early stage if if at all it uh, it detected at last stage no one can do anything so for that we have to we have to understand the thing and uh, we have to provide certain uh, treatment so this is it from my side uh, Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Javed, um, why you have chosen only CNN? Is there any specific reason? Um, no specific reason, ma'am. But uh, what I have observed uh, in a literature survey is so some people have already used. Uh, some other algorithms and like uh, SVM and some other models also. But we were actually trying to improve the accuracy. So in that case, we find we found CNN was giving us a promising result. Though we did not test with other algorithms, just we have believed that uh, other papers suggested so that. It means uh, in the previous research, nobody has taken the CNN. Am I right? No, 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 no not like that, ma'am. Actually, they have taken, but. Uh, we thought of improving the accuracy and we have got so up to 95 percent how your results are better than them even the same methodology you are adopting which they have already taken uh, i think accurate uh, some metrics right evolution metrics performance metrics are there so those must clearly indicate uh, uh, a better accuracy in a sense a better model which we feel have you compared your results with anyone? How can you say um, your model is best? Your model no, no, no. is we can't. 
<laughs> we can't say our model is best no model is accurate no model is best in a machine learning ha ah, that's what i'm saying na matlab yeah. see if we are yeah, giving yeah. data to your model and your model yeah. is giving us result whether a patient yeah. is having cancer or not so how yeah. we can uh, trust on matlab reliability and trustability how much percentage is in your model now you got my question i have already answered like uh, accuracy must uh, accuracy must indicate the uh, reliability or what uh, you can but, say but you have not compared with the previous one it is it is your model accuracy right yeah yeah, yeah ma'am yeah ma'am and and there yeah accuracy yeah. is not only the benchmark yeah which yes, proves the uh, best performance of our model yes ma'am sure do you agree with this yeah yeah ma'am i agree with it and then you were giving me reply ke my model is giving accuracy and that's why again you are saying ke accuracy is not only the benchmark which proves the best model so these two are mm. the contradictory na yes mm, or yeah yeah, yeah ma'am <laughs> So, so not, should I? Work is required to do the best model. Actually, yeah, yeah, we, man, yeah. we can do. See, yeah, man, we have this. When we are doing the research now, we yes. are yes. just making our own model, and we yes. are saying my accuracy is let's say ninety five percent or ninety nine percent. and based yeah. on that accuracy i am saying my model is the best one and whatever okay. prediction is coming out from this model uh, the result are better and than the previous one but it is okay. not like this dear okay okay uh, okay okay yes yeah. is not giving me only accuracy does not mean my model is yeah. best yeah 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 So we have to make a comparative analysis on other benchmark also. Okay, ma'am. So n n n number of factors and n number of parameters are there on the basis yeah, yeah. of which we have to make a comparative analysis. Yes, After ma'am. that comparative analysis, we can say yes, my model is best, and I can recommend to the pathologist to check whether a patient is having cancer or not. Oh yeah, yeah, ma'am. So I agree. So, ma'am, uh, I have a doubt. So, yes. for doing comparative analysis, should uh, I again work with some other models also, uh, or yes. shall I refer yes. to no. models? No, no, dear. If you want to improve the uh, functionality of your model, you have okay. to make a comparative analysis of the recent model. Recent okay. means oh. only two to three years. the people are working in okay. this area you can make a comparative analysis and and do each and every uh, result with the parameters they have adopted and you are taking in your project only then we can okay. say my okay 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 right? okay okay god bless you okay. Okay. thank you ma'am shall shall i leave the meeting yes you can leave Yeah, thank you, ma'am. So, thank you so much, David. Now, our next presentation manuscript ID is IMCC RT four two one nine, and paper titled as Design and Fabrication of Extract Biodiesel from Waste Plastic Material. So, I would request presenter to please share this screen. कुणाल प्लीज शेयर युअर स्क्रीन
Hello. Hello. Yes, you are audible. Okay, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Myself Kunal Thavre, pursuing mechanical engineer from PBCOE. I am here to present my mega project, which is design and fabrication of extract biodiesel from waste plastic material. Sir, I want to share my PPT. My group group member Arpit Anwar and uh, Samir Kadwe under the Murler. Start introduction. Plastic waste is uh, generated every day, estimated above 15 k tons per day in India. And natural breakdown and degeneration of plastic takes a very long time in the earth according to statics every year about 63 percent waste plastic in either filled in land or in the natural environment and some gets mixed and filled in the ocean water bodies like rivers and lakes in the project we are using a pyrolysis technology used uh, used to heating substance in an absence of oxygen that dissolve all the types of waste plastic heating temperature should be around 350 to 450 degrees celsius in this study pyrolysis is used to attain the required temperature where all the types of waste plastic is being converting to fuel work like uh, other fuels like petrol diesel and kerosene by implementing this concept some amount of uh, waste plastic can be reduced 7 to 80 percent of uh, waste plastic uh, and can provide above 50 percent oil for diesel vehicles next slide Object to develop and uh, fabricate the pyrolysis unit to produce liquid fuel from waste plastic uh, Pyrolysis is the heating of an organic material such as a biomass in a absence of oxygen. Next, conversion of household plastic waste into liquid fuel. To purify the product, produce liquid fuel by way water washing method. To conduct the different experiment to determine the different properties of liquid fuels. List of material, frames, uh, material in milled steel, reactor unit, condenser unit, pressure guide, uh, temperature sensors, gate walls, gas burner, and LED. Uh, process is collect the waste uh, of plastic material. Second, pre-treatment, shredder, pyrolysis, condensation, refining and oil is collected the collector next slide, next slide first step process of pre treatment and shelters plastic waste is sent to pre treatment and that plastic shelters and here plastic is used to cut in smaller pieces this the fire and then this chamber next pyrolysis pyrolysis plastic pyrolysis process is a very effective process pro means heat and lysis means breakdown pyrolysis is the heating of organic material such as a biomass in the absence of oxygen plastic is a heat up to 450 degrees celsius in presence of catalyst and in the absence of oxygen the plastic is converted into the plastic gases state and this is the sent to condenser next is next slide condensation condensation is the conversion of gas into liquid form and then it is sent to refining a chamber next slide is refining and next is this graph shows 80% uh, oil, 50% gas, 
and five percent carbon blanks in which this contents you are showing there 80 percent last slide 80 80 percent uh, is a oil in which in which a base plastic material base plastic material may hamara 80 percent means you are saying all kind of waste plastic material is having 80% of oil. Am I right? No. Hmm. Then what? It is the generalization you are giving over here. You are not specific. You have not shown the title of this graph. You have not written anything. How we would be able to understand what you are talking about. You got my question? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Then, this is not the way to make a graph. No. Nothing is mentioned over here. Your bars are showing what? Ma'am, uh, after we are using plastic, uh, when we use pl plastic and that plastic goes through py pyrolysis process, then uh, in, gen in general case, 80% of oil is uh, produced and 15% of gas and 5% of carbon black is produced. So in, in general case, uh, we cannot no, say that... No, no, I'm talking about when you are talking in the general, so it means almost all the plastic is having this percentage of content? No, ma'am. No, no. Uh, if we if we combine, uh, we are not uh, uh, talking about uh, a particular kind of plastic. plastic. So we general taking, means what? In general means, ma'am, uh, we are taking uh, not a, a one particular kind of plastic material. We we combine all the plastic materials. So and all then, means any brand, any type. It could be any. Biodiesel. Okay, go ahead. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Uh, ma'am, this is our uh, project image. You can see that uh, there is a cooker Con condenser, and we we have we will heat uh, means pyrolysis process will be going on through this. So this is uh, our project image. It will look like this, ma'am. And these are the applications of our, our uh, project. That is a uh, railway usage, aircraft aircraft use as a heating oil cleaning oil spills, biodiesel in generators, power generations, agriculture equipments, and commercial boilers. So, and uh, the next slide is the advantages of the, our project. Uh, it uh, reduces the environmental effect of waste products. It means that, for example, if there are... Uh, so we, we can uh, come to the application slide. Okay. You have shown here as a heating oil. Heating oil means what? Ma'am, see, uh, the plastic material is heated. Means uh, it uh, to convert that plastic into uh, oil, we have to pass that plastic uh, through a, a very high temperature. So the oil which will be uh, coming out of that process will be it will be its, its temperature will be very hot. So we can use it so, as, a, as a heating oil. No, heating oil means what? What kind of so, oil? Ma'am, heating so oil is any petrol. Hello, ma'am. Heating oil is any petroleum product or other soil. Can, oil can you, can you give heating. me any example of this heating oil? Can you give me an example? Yes, ma'am. Can you give me an example Hello. of this heating oil? Ma'am, we can say uh, kerosene, diesel fuel, and fuel oil for home heating. Hello? Kerosene oil. So kerosene oil is made from the base plastic. Can we say this? No, we cannot say this. It it, it then, is kind of. We can say kind of. So it is a kind of in the sense. I'm not getting your point. If you are saying heating oil is the example of kerosene oil. So it means kerosene oil is coming from the base plastic. And no, ma'am. I, is... I don't mean like this. I'm. I'm. I mean that it. It has. It will be having some properties of kerosene oil. 
means not it is not kerosene oil but it can act as a kerosene oil means we can see you know that kerosene is the most common heating oil oil type so uh, the when we uh, uh, process this plastic through pyrolysis the heating oil it can be used as a heating oil it may contain some properties of kerosene oil i am not saying that kerosene is a uh, can be made through plastic material through pyrol pyrolysis hello okay okay move on and these are the advantages of uh, our project ma'am as we know that uh, there are a, a huge amount of plastic in the world when if we use the plastic in, in this way as we are using in this project then it will reduce the environmental effect of waste products biodiesel fuel is a re renewable energy source it produces less carbon dioxide than normal diesel fuel the raw material will be readily available it, it, it will be safe to handle store and, and can be transported very easily thank you ma'am so kunal what is actually the novelty in your project we will have already done this um what what is the novelty um, new novelty. thing in this project what you have done this all is already done by some people yes or no kunal puran yes puran what am i am i audible kunal hello yes ma'am so i am saying what is the novelty here in your project ma'am uh, there is nothing new but uh, yeah. <laughs> nothing new is there so you have just reviewed the existing one rewrite the existing one right yes ma'am okay dear you can leave okay moving toward our next uh, manuscript id sorry for that Uh, the manuscript ID is uh, IMCC RT four one nine three, and paper entitled as Design Structural Thermal and Contact Analysis of S Single Row Deep Groove Ball Bearing. I would request presenter to please unmute himself and uh, share this screen. Ah, uh, good afternoon, sir. I'm Yash Vyas from Medicaps University. Ah, uh, sir, this is my presentation. hello yes sir we can see it please go ahead uh, uh, good afternoon sir today i will uh, be giving a presentation on the design structural thermal and contact analysis of single row deep groove ball bearing firstly uh, we have four members first in gorav government second one is parak sahu and third one is prashant yadav and uh, fourth one is me yash vyas i'm uh, belonging medicaps university first one i will um, but uh, this is my abstract mechanical system jo hota hai uh, mechanical systems requires relative motions between machines parts so the, and then jo bearing models frictions and wear reduce power uh, and surface quality during relative motions bearing mostly transfers load and allow relative motion between components and minimal frictions so uh, act, uh, sorry sir pointed so sir jo transmission power losses heat bearing so then uh, so we will decide uh, uh, we will decide we um, we um, we we analyze we analyze uh, trans uh, we this study use final uh, finite element analysis for strat static structural thermal and contact analysis of and compare a deep groove ball bearing this is used uh, mostly this is used in anal analysis ansi software uh, for static thermal and contact analysis and intro, uh, introduction is a ball bearing sir is a type of rolling element bearing that uses ball to maintain separation between the bearing races single row deep groove ball bearing is was one of the most common type of uh, ball bearing used in various industries due to its low cost 
high load capacity and low friction so and so this is our literature review uh because it is uh, it is a heat generated is not effectively evaluated friction in bearing bases so material selection is a critical in ball bearing design since it influences a wide variety of bearing pro uh, properties steel is a uh, one of the most commonly used to make ball bearing rings the constructions of deep groove ball bearing is a very simple and extensively used so so sir contact finite elements analysis may display information about bearing and contact such as contact stresses strain penetration sliding distance among other things which is a uh, which is most important in optical design of complex rolling bearing and this is our methodology uh, firstly we will uh, firstly uh, finite element modeling is main research method uh, is so used in the this project finite element model will be made on a step by step basis of which start study and basic assumptions and simplifications of model firstly we will decide uh, uh, to create a model in creo software firstly we will uh, uh, firstly we will create a creo uh, bearing and creo software and uh, and then we will analysis the in ansys software first one is analysis is structural and th uh, structural thermal and contact analysis we have done in three analysis so uh, for, uh, and we have compare analytical and uh, analysis we have compare uh, two things analytical and anal analysis so sir this is our description of a problem and uh, we will calculate it in this uh, production cycles product yes sir, we have a uh, this is our calculations and sir this is a pa basic parameter of skf 6016 bearing uh, and uh, final finally we have uh, done in equivalent dynamic load dynamic load rating and from skf product table data uh, data the single row deep group ball bearing number is 601 having c is uh, equals to 52 uh, kn may be selected so this is our basic parameters of skf 06 uh, 6016 bearing uh, the di dimensions all the dimensions should diameter this is diameter chamfer dimension basic dynamic load rating basic static load rating fatigue load limit minimum load factor and uh, this is uh, uh, this is the So, uh, sir, modeling in Creo. Sir, first one. Uh, sir, this is our Creo software, and hey. get the bearing. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry for interruption. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, sorry. Sir, sir uh, this is our uh, FEA finite element and ah uh, finite element element analysis. we have done in uh, we have done in uh, software in ansys first one we have done in static static uh, static structural examination the structural analysis of single row deep groove balling in, involves determine a load carrying capacity stiffness deformation uh, under various loads so final element analysis is used to st uh, stimulate the bearing behavior under the different load uh, loading condition so, so final uh, final element analysis Result help in optimization the bearing design parameter to achieve better performance. And so thermal uh, thermal examination, the so thermal examination of single row deep groove ball bearing involves determining the operation operating temperature. So uh, they determines the operating temperature under various loads and speed. The operating temperature affects the bearing life and performance. F uh, finite element analysis is used to stimulate the bearing thermal behavior and result. help in selecting the appropriate lubricant and optimizing the bearing design parameter sir common thermal quantities jo hoti hai are temperature distribution a proper uh, of heat losses or grabbed thermal movements so sir we have there are either static or transient uh, transfer first one a steady state thermal assistant choose temperature distribution and other quantities under static loads and conditions bearing jo uh, bearing are made in of high carbon chromium steels Of, for for the following reasons because high and low temperature resistance high strength is uh, that's why right. and contact analysis of single row deep groove ball bearing involves determine the contact stresses between the ball and raised wheels the contact stresses affect the bearing life and performance uh, finite element analysis is used to stimulate the bearing contact behavior and result to uh, help in uh, optimization the bearing design parameter to achieve better contact performance so th this is our properties of bearing material bearing part name material modulus of elasticity 
n another power ml square density and poisonous ratio and so this is our final uh, result and discussions so we have done in two results deep groove ball bearing 6016 without thermal effect and with thermal firstly sir we will define the without without thermal effect so sir ansys allow the determination to conception of structural uh, deformation and warm ices due to sliding friction sir we will uh, uh, the result is bearing deformation sir yes sir kya deformation aa raha hai so sir the total deformation of bearing is 2.505 uh, is maximum should, uh, sir this photo, uh, first one photograph is show total deformation and second one in photograph is showing a bearing equivalent warm ice stress sir they uh, they are equivalent stress of bearing sir generated around 26 mpa which is lesser than the allowance stress 210 mpa and uh, sir uh, we uh, third one photograph is bearing equivalent stress the equivalent elastic strain of the bearing is of 1.495 as shown in the figure of equivalent stress and sir uh, Uh, and fourth one is life of bearing so we will be uh, define a life of bearing so life of deep groove ball bearing is computed through analysis code as shown in figures life of bearing is on the order of 1 e to e to the power 6 which is well accepted it is said that the life of ball bearing is under limit and compared to anatical one as design uh, and so design is safe uh, and so second one is deep groove ball bearing 60616 uh, result with thermal effect So, sir, present segment deals with the bearing model when deal in thermal analysis. Basically, we get information of model behavior when stresses are placed and up to the up to what temperature it gain and how the temperature distribution taking place along the profile. Temperature distribution, sir. Temperature distribution of ball bearing for speed of eight zero eight zero zero RPM and heat generated of six point two three nine is in the range of twenty six twenty three. To the twenty uh, three degrees Celsius uh, to twenty two degrees Celsius. So this is our uh, actual result. And uh, <coughs> one is heat flux distribution. Heat flux, sir, how much heat flux distribution is going on in our bearing model? Mein. Heat flux for the bearing is the range of zero point zero zero nine one three eight seven to four point eight eight five six in the shown figure of uh, heat flux distribution. And sir, last one photograph is contact distribution. Contact distribution, from uh, contact distribution analysis. From it is noted that contact stress changes, uh, such changes are there. So then the maximum stress was at the contact point, which correspond to the line at which the radial forces move. The ball had the ma maximum stress which equaled to 50 mpa. Throughout the simulation, the calculation results of the maximum contact stresses was uh, was 50 mpa. While the sir has uh, Hertzian theory value was 58 mpa. The comparison revealed. That uh, there was good consistency between Hazard and theory solution and uh, finite algebra solution. This is our con uh, conclusion in future scopes, sir. We have a uh, uh, this is the the thesis work attempt studies designs structural thermal analysis and static structural and transient thermal analysis of ANSYS workbench for bearing system deformations, warm ice stress, life of bearing, temperature distribution, heat flux. Distribution and contact analysis of bearing model has been crisis um, has been um, uh, carries out in order to improve the friction uh, frictional effectiveness and provide good stability to the shaft in the design stage. In the present work, bearing model has been analyzed using two approaches, namely analytically and FE analysis. We have done in sir two approaches. First one is analytical and FE analysis. In uh, this addition, at the com Contact pressure distribution is also carried out in a U U A F E A finite element analysis and Hazard theory to compare uh, stress deformation. From the result, it can be deducted that uh, more uh, deformation occurs. Uh, sir, these are the points. More deform deformations occur at the inner ring compared to the outer ring of compare. Uh, when dealing with uh, without thermal effect, large stressor and uh, strain generated. at the ball of bear a uh, ball of the bearing life of bearing is in the multiple of 10 to the power 6 uh, it means that bearing is quietly safe against the radial and axial exi uh, axial loads temperature distribution show uh, show that the last temperature generated at the inner ring of bearing and heat flux show the most of the heat dissipated at the ball of bearing large deformation are found 
in solid disk compare in ventilated disk bus but stress are reduced in solid disk the comparison for contact analysis revealed that uh, there was good consistency between the hazardian th theory solution and finite edge future scope of the project regarding the present project uh, proje project work uh, there are many recommendation for the ex uh, expansion of future works related bearing models that can be done on uh, to further understanding the effect of thermomechanical contact between uh, balls and rings and the thermal and contact can be extended and we can replace that uh, that uh, this single row deep groove bonding 6016 with another single row deep groove ball bearing both uh, those load carrying capacity is more than this bearing study the effect of speed on ball bearing study different material and select the best from them experimental experimental analysis to verify the accurate accuracy of present numerical model development thank you so much sir this is a, this is my presentation hello hello yes yeah no question from my side okay ma'am uh, moving toward our next presentation <laughs> The manuscript ID is IMCC. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Sir. Uh, manuscript ID is IMCC RT 4160. Paper entitled as Design and Development of Economical 3D Printer. So I would request presenter to please share the screen. Uh, Mr. Ashraf Khan, are you there? Yes, sir. Good evening. Share your screen. So good, e good evening, all of you. Uh, my name is Ashraf Khan, and uh, my uh, abstract idea is I am CCRT 2023-4160. Uh, my talk, uh, the topic of my paper is design and development of economical 3D printer. Uh, these are my co-authors, Mohammad Faisal Abbasi, Ramdin Mishra, and Dr. Chitrish Nayak. I am from Medigaps University, Indore, India and currently pursuing last year uh, in mechanical engineering. Uh, so the abstracts uh, you can see, sir, the objective of our project is to focus on the optimization and fabrication of portable 3D printer with a bed volume of 100 by 100 by 100 mm cube, uh, which is co uh, constructed sustainably and economically. Uh, the designing and the development of economical 3D printer we, uh, is required to understand through the technology material and the component involved in the process. Uh, the whole printer is developed to reduce the cost of the printer and uh, print the 3D object with the help of CAD design software. Uh, 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 3D printing is a additive manufacturing technology. This process, uh, the process which we have adopted in this is FDM technology in which different materials like PLA, ABS and uh, etc. Uh, are heated and in the form of filament at, at its melting point and it, it get deposit layer by layer and the combination of the layer gives the final 3D model. Designing and de development of the 3D printer requires care careful consideration of the component material and design. With the right approach, it is possible to create a 3D printer that is affordable, functional and good quality the purpose method is to uh, this is the uh, this research is further improving and uh, we are ongoing research uh, the uh, uh, the introductions the the first machine was developed by the charles halls in 1980s uh, which works on the stereo uh, lithography and also called as stereo lithography machine uh, it uses a laser uh, led uh, laser to cure the liquid uh, raw material and uh, uh, give it exact shape and shape, 
uh, size uh, as we want to what uh, they uh, they also develop a file format which is stl file format which is commonly used nowadays also in the 3d printing machines and uh, additive manufacturing is a technique that makes 3d object with the help of computer without any human involvement uh this is an automatic manufacturing which is which can print any type or any shape of, of uh, with any material uh the difference uh, this is different it is different from conventional man manufacturing that is subtractive manufacturing in subtractive manufacturing the object manufactured by us is by remo removing the unwanted material in the form of chips but here in add additive manufacturing technology we use the object uh in uh, that is manufacturing layer by layer without any wastage like in the form of chips and the object is printed from the bottom to the up in the form of the layer and ex uh, the in the exact size uh, shape and size that we want uh, although this technology has numerous advantages uh, it also has ma major problem uh, the major problem the first one is the cost of the machine the cost of the machine is the biggest hurdle uh, for the uh, machine application in the small and medium scale industry and this cost is greatly linked with the, to the accuracy and the reliability of the machine the cost of the machine start increasing as you go more accurate and reliable machine so in our research we try to manufacture a low cost 3d printer machine that can print any shape with abs and plf filament as the uh, accuracy uh, as the accuracy of the machine is very cr critical parameter so the accuracy of the machine is also been kept in mind while developing the print economical 3d printer will provide opportunity to small businesses and entrepreneurs to create prototypes custom parts and low volume production run without any need of large scale equipment these are the two major objective which we have focused in our uh, project uh, the first one is to design and develop a sustainable 3d printer with a economical cost and second is it it should be less maintenance portable and lightweight so that we can move it uh, as we want to so the method which we pursue to develop uh, the 3d printer the first step is we select the additive manufacturing process among the processes then approach uh, then appropriate mechanism to select x and y z axis movement uh, considering va various factors such as cost of fabrication simplicity of design synchronization and accuracy once the mechanism is selected the next step is integration of the electronics and software the machine is designed and fabricated and the last step is to synchronize uh, the synchronization of mechanical electrical and software element of the machine these are the uh, process which we have used to that first we have dis determine our budget uh, choose the right component uh, select the right material considering consider the design prototype test uh, optimize the software and final product uh, these are these are the specific uh, design specification of our model uh, the build volume is 100 by 100 by 100 mm the meta method used or the uh, technique we call is fused de deposition modeling uh, the third is laser re resolution height matlab uh, it means the uh, amount of material released from the extruder uh, from one time is 55 microns and uh, number of extruder is one the machine size the overall machine size is 300 mm in length width and height uh, machine weight is 4.5 kg Uh, the power supply is dc volt uh, 12 volt and 5 amperes power consumption is uh, and connectivity is sd card uh, filament diameter is 1.7 mm the nozzle diameter at, uh, from which the material comes out is 0.4 mm and the filament that we can use is pla abs thermoplast and etc uh, this is the the cost estimation uh, in which Uh, we build a r 3d printer the total cost is 12000 rupees uh, and this is our model of the 3d printer uh, these are the different views of the 3d printer which we have made and the object uh, printed by the 3d printer 
the conclusion is the outcome of this project that was to build a 3d printer which has been successfully completed the design and the frame is made uh, made robust and compact the material selection of the various element is economical using a, a single motor for a variety uh, vertical movement along with a proximity sensor make make the bed leveling easy the bed movement is mo uh, monitored with resolution in microns the drawback in a few of the 3d printer which use bed in y axis has distortion of the print, uh, printed layer at the high rate of printing to overcome this drawback a mechanism has been developed which use bed movement in z the control of the mechanism become easy because of the less number of motor and good synchronization can be achieved using the new 3d printing technique uh, this was the first attempt in the direction of the uh, in the direction of this project the further works in same direction will maximize the out output the future scope of the uh, 3d printer economical 3d printer the future scope of economical 3d printer is quite promising as the technology continues to advance the cost associated with 3d printing continue to decrease uh, more and more people will have access to their technology here are some potential areas where the 3d printer have significant impact in future first is personalized manufacturing as the cost of 3d printer continues to decrease more and more people able to manufacture customize the product at home and this could include everything from clothes to household items to medical devices uh, sustainable Sustainable, manu sustainable manufacturing 3D printer has the potential to uh, revolutionize the manufacturing industry by reducing waste and enabling more e efficient use of material. With 3D printing, only the necessary amount of material is used, which can reduce the amount of waste created during the manufacturing. Third is education sector. As the pr uh, 3D printer become more affordable, it will it will become a valuable tool for education. Student will able to create prototypes and models of the design, which can help to understand them better. Uh, the complex function. Overall, the future scope of the economical 3D printer is bright. Uh, we can accept, uh, expect to see many new applications in this technology in upcoming years. These are the references where we have uh, taken the or uh, guide us the work to do. And thank you so much. Uh, you may ask questions. Hello, Ashraf. Yes, ma'am. Ashraf, what is your contribution in this? 3D printer is already a topic is there. So yes, what you did in this? Ma'am, I have tried to, ma'am, in the market, we have observed that the 3D printer cost is so much higher that a normal person or a small scale industry can't afford it for the manufacturing of any object. So we try to build the 3D printer that is economical and pr can print up to the level of the printer that is uh, selling in the market. So have you completed it? Can you show the uh, screenshot of the same? Can ah, you show yes, the picture on economical 3D printer? Um, yes, ma'am. Um, this, is, this is the the upper side is different view of our 3D printer. Uh, um, I can... Uh, uh, show you right now because the 3D printer is in my college and I am at my home. So okay, so okay. this printer is made by you. Yes, ma'am. Yes. It is available in the market. Uh, no, ma'am. Ma this design is not available, but a uh, 3D printer is available. No, 3D printer I know, but uh, yours yes. 3D printer is available. No, no, no ma'am. My 3D printer is not available currently. I am in I am in uh, contact with my college. Uh, entrepreneur group so that I can uh, patent this design and uh, work with uh, further to. So, which uh, material you have used in that? How uh, your 3D printer is more economical than the market uh, one? Firstly, the body is made up of my, uh, plastic or fiber, we can say. And okay. the parts we have used in, the, uh, in this 3D printer are refurbished or used right. parts. Yes. Right. Right, right, Ashraf. Right. Okay, thank you, Ashraf. Thank you so
Okay, so our next presentation manuscript ID is IMCC RT 4217 and uh, paper entitled as Contextual Automation Image Caption Creation Using Pre-trained Language Generation Model. So I would request presenter to share this screen. Mr. Mohammad Daniel, are you there? Yes, I am here. Once. Please uh, do share your screen, sir. Okay. Uh, my topic is the contextual uh, automatic image caption generation using pre-trained language generation model. Uh, my name is Muhammad Danyal, and my supervisor is Dr. Roman and uh, Abdul Shai, and I am from Pakistan, uh, Kast University of Science and Technology, Kuwait. Uh, first of all, I uh, see on abstract. Uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, but how will blind and visual inspired people identify the image? This is a difficult task for blind people, uh, even under some angle, when the item appearance changed to one point to other point where it is no longer recognizable. Uh, it might be changing for human eye to not an object. So to develop a machine with the ability to understand and interpret the real world, uh, one of the motivated factor of artificial intelligence uh, researcher nowadays in creation of machine that can comprehend and analyze, analyze problem in the real world. Preparing a, preparing a machine that automatically generate description from image might help blind people to uh, watch the surrounding environment, meaning uh, watch a surrounding environment. Okay, and uh, automatic creating uh, image, automatic creating a caption or automatic creating subtitle help people better understanding their environment and enable them to learn more about the photos or pictures. Image caption generation is a task describe the description of image content or the caption of the image content. So the image caption is a cross domain issue that can significant implementation for both computer vision and natural language processing. So um, many researchers have contributed by putting forth several model and methodology that consider the significance and difficulty associated with the automatic uh, synthesis of caption from image. Uh, different approaches are used uh, in image captioning. Uh, deep learning approaches are used in image captioning, but but in deep learning have made it feasible to generate caption with a suitable description. Uh, these generated description are typically extremely similar to those seen during training. Furthermore, due to the limitation of vocabulary that the context of image con content is not uh, clearly defined. So, uh, so that propose, we propose a model that describes the context of image content. It is based on encoder decoder framework. Encoder first extract the feature of image and decoder generate, uh, decoder I mean, a generator pre-trained transformer. Model is used to generate the description of image. So uh, let's start the over, overview. First of all, I talk about the introduction. As we know that a picture is worth a thousand words and how blind people uh, inspiring people identify the image. This is one of the difficult tasks of blind people. It can even be difficult for human eye to detect an object in a specific angle. Or we can see through, uh, throughout our life, daily life, we encounter image in many forms, for instance, or internet, or we see image in newspaper, in article, in documents, or in uh, different diagrams, in advertisement. So human can gradually adopt uh, uh, inter, uh, human can uh, easily interpret image and describe them in text, okay? But if we want 
if a machine to describe image description then it must be machine must be understand the meaning of the uh, content of image mean machine must be understand how image present what the image present sorry what the image present so preparing a machine that automatically generate caption might help blind people to understand their uh, surrounding areas so image caption is the process of generating textual description of image our literature is divided into three forms of list i uh, mean in that area in image captioning uh, our literature is divided in three form first is search based approach second one is template based approach and the third one is uh, deep learning approach in search based approach methodology and methodology are totally depend on the existing database mean when we train a model our mod when we train a model with different data set uh, during the testing phase when i say when i ask model or when i ask model what is the what the image present then that model totally depend on the existing database mean during learning for our model uh, uh, can learn different uh, and simply matlab existing database second is template based approach this method is obtain visual content information from the image and generate sentence by language model and simple from the lack of diversity in deep learning also use to create the crep chain of the image caption or the description of the image but there are some difficulties maybe based on various technical framework so this is a uh, different paper which depend on uh, which is used to captioning of image okay and uh, our problem statement existing the description created during the testing and typically extremely similar to those seen during the training phase because model typically use direct representation of description they encounter it make it difficult to achieve human performance since it cause numerous repeats and restriction the diversity of generated description also the caption size cannot vary based on image content and user internet furthermore the context of image content is not consider while generating image caption the object detection within an image do not related to each other and therefore the existing approach fail to achieve the content of or uh, 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 for achieve the content of image so we need a machine that can extract the scenes of the image and show the realistic meaning that are not in the training set the training should be just to get the content out of it such as scenes or finding relationship between the object so uh, you can see here that all the existing uh, author or all the existing researcher work is that uh, you can see here side on side image dog of image so caption uh, over uh, original caption is dog with its mouth open but model generate dog is running through the grass and mean this is totally wrong i gave i put image to the model and model totally uh, gave the uh, wrong answer or model totally uh, ask that this image present that content you see next image man is standing on side wall in the background but you can see that when i should uh, when i will train a model and put image to the model that what the context of image present what the context of image present the uh, model totally wrong answer model totally gave the wrong answer so the main objective is our main objective is to describe to generate a caption in such a way that it is understand scene or semantic of image mean uh, uh, i uh, starting i say that image present thousand of word mean image image have many uh, scenes image present multiple words okay 
So her main objective is to generate the caption in such a way that it can understand scenes or semantic of image. She described the image by having the contextual understanding of object in relation to other object image. To explore the effectiveness of generative transformer to describe the context of image. So this is our methodology uh, diagram. I can explain further. First of all, image data set. I get uh, data set from uh, Flickr, I, uh, Flickr 30K or MS Coco or Flickr 8K. This data set is only just for uh, to get from image. Image processing, this is the first step. First of all, image processing is the first step to achieve the effectiveness of proposed model. Proposing uh, pre-processing is necessary to create clean or high quality picture data of model input. So perform certain pre-processing steps are resizing, orientation, grayscale, noise removal, or histogram equalization. A regional proposal. The regional proposal technique is used to create region of interest in an image consisting of various objects in it. Uh, these regions suggest suggestion are sizable collection of bounding boxes that cover the entire image. Feature extraction. So different algorithm is used to extract the feature of image. Uh, here we use CNN. Bounded box production. When you can see uh, below image that multiple boxes are generated when model Q answer. A multi boxes is a rectangle, rectangle that surround an object and indicate its position. These boxes, these bounded boxes is predicting by feature of the entire image. Object in an image can be Different size, differentiation algorithm create multiple bounded box. Uh, different object algorithm, uh, caption algorithm are used. One is YOLO model, uh, YOLO algorithm, and one is SSD to uh, detecting object. And uh, use non maximum suppression method. This is the method that combines overlapping multiple boxes in single box and eliminate all other boxes in order to choose the optimal bounding box. So uh, when we finalize or when we extract the object from image, then we give this image to the language generator model. Uh, then the generator vector is equally pushed to the decoder. First, I talk about encoder and decoder. Encoder is over CNN means CNN extract different features from image, and then we give these features or these objects to the other um, uh, model uh, or decoder, uh, which I say language generator, transformer, generator pre-trained transformer. So uh, different methods, uh, as the last different method we use to our research, uh, different evolution model are one is blue, second is rouge, third one is different parameter is used to evaluate for model. Rouge, metro, C I D E R, cider, or spice. And these are the reference. And uh, thank you. Uh, can you ask question, please? Hello, Mohammed uh, Danyal. Am I audible? Yes. Uh, uh, I live in the side area in Pakistan where the signal does not come through. So your voice uh, is not coming here. Okay. Is my voice is coming? Yes, your voice is very clear to us, but my voice is not clear to you as told by you. Yes. So yes. if voice is not coming, then how can I ask a question? But not an issue. Go okay. ahead. 
right? Okay. Okay. So, uh, ask question. Am I am I audible to you? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, tell me the your objective of this. What you want to do in this paper? Uh, main objective is to describe the image by having the contextual understanding of object. It means or, sort of uh, sort of review paper. It's sort of review paper. Am I G -G. clear? G -G. Because because you have not uh, done new. It's all already developed a method, already used method, and you were explaining those methods. So it's a sort of review paper. Uh, Madam, uh, yes, this is a sort of review paper, but mm -hmm. my contribution is to describe the image having the contextual understanding. But mm -hmm. existing uh, uh, papers are not Define fully defines uh, your one a minute. You can see here. You can see the screen. Mm. You can see there the existing research paper. Uh, now you can see original description of dog with its mouth open. But when a model is trained, it totally wrong answer. Dog is running through the grass. Mm -hmm. In this paper. Two models are used. One is CNN and second one is LSTM. And this is the result of that model. First, they your, extract the feature of feature from your image. model is LSTM. No, my model is GPT-3, generative okay. pre-trained transformer. Right, right, right. So this is a huge difference. You can see uh, model not present uh, 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 actual context of image. So all the right. existing paper, all the existing paper depend on uh, one method, uh, researcher one use search-based approach, template-based approach, and deep learning approach. But but told, uh, but the total problem is that original description and predictive description are different. Right, right. I got your point. Right. You can leave Muhammad Danish. Muhammad Daniel. Muhammad, <laughs> Muhammad Daniel. <laughs> you can leave and uh, you have explained in a very uh, thorough manner because you have gone through in a very deep. So you can now leave. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, ma'am, uh, we are done with uh, today's presentation. So, lastly, only your presentation is remaining. So, would you like to present? Yes, sir. I am going to present my screen. So okay. you, so we do you have a signature there. with us, uh, Doctor Anirudh Kolpakwar, sir. He is from Sandeep right. University, Nashik. He is working there as associate professor. So right, sir. Give me yeah. yeah, give me one minute. I am going to present. Sure. Is my screen visible, sir? Yes, ma'am, it is. So, a very good afternoon, sir. Uh, this is Chitra, and uh, I am going to present my paper in which we have used the imbalanced classification methods so that we can predict the academic performance of the students. See, sir, data is uh, in the imbalanced state, as we all know. So if we are giving that imbalanced data to our model, the result would be biased. So to uh, 
stop this problem to get the correct result, we use this imbalanced classification methods. So in this, firstly, the introduction is, my introduction for this paper is, generally the performance of higher education system is sustained by student outcome. It means whenever uh, we want to judge which institution is better or which university is better, we uh, can check through the success of the students means what is the result rate of the student, what is the training and placement proportion of the students and all that. So basically when we want to know the result of the students, we have to just predict their previous performance or previous academic rate. So when we are able to judge okay, which of the student in my class is at the lower end, uh, at that moment, I can check or I can uh, guide that student that you have to work hard because you are at the boundary of the failure. So uh, this is all about that whenever we are uh, want to check the success of a student, it can be measured by predicting the performance on the basis of their previous academic grade. So because of the imbalanced nature of the data set, whenever we are building the model, that is basically with the bias result. So my, and the goal of my paper is, the I have just reviewed the published articles in the last five years because I have uh, reviewed the articles uh, 2018 to 2022 related to the academic performance prediction and in which we have uh, used the imbalanced classification method. So, sir, uh, when we talk about the review, so I have used the state-of-the-art approach. So, state-of-the-art approach is basically includes my data set characteristics and whatever methods already have applied in the previous research and whatever algorithms and their comparative analysis, this all will come under the state-of-the-art approach, which we have used for this systematic literature review. This paper is basically related to the literature review and the uh, literature review of the last five years. And we use this state-of-the-art approach. So in this paper, we have also discussed the balancing method used in the previous research of five years and also culminated their effect to rectify the problem of imbalanced classification, which exists at the three level, data level, algorithm level, and high level. So, apart from these three levels, we can use the feature selection, like in case of data level, we can, we can uh, uh, review the data or we can uh, just uh, balance the data either by undersampling or by oversampling or uh, the mix of these, either by we can uh, uh, reduce the number of instances in the major classes like uh, if I have a data and the majority of the students are passed and very less students are failed. So this is a uh, basically imbalanced data. So I can balance this data either by data level which I can use with the undersampling or the oversampling or the hybrid one. The next method which I can use to balance my data is algorithm level. And the third one is the uh, hybrid level in which I can mix these two one. All right. So next I have the research contribution of my paper. Research contribution, there are four research contribution of my paper is. First is the imbalanced classification method will be analyzed and summarized in a comprehensive form at three level approaches, data level, algorithm level, and hybrid level. Second is this paper, my paper provides a taxonomy of currently prevailing imbalanced classification methods through which we can predict the student's grades and the most apparent or the mostly used, most primarily used algorithm in the domain of the education. 
Third is comparative and analytical approach of existing balance method and their classifier in both cases, in binary classification as well as in multi-class classification for future direction is also presented in my paper. This we have the diagram of imbalanced classification techniques. As we can see through this diagram, we have four techniques of uh, imbalanced classification, data level, algorithmic level, cost sensitive and, and ensemble learning approach. So in data level, we have undersampling, oversampling, and high sampling. So when we talk about the data level, so it is a very basic approach. It means basically at this level of approach, we have to equalize the number of instances, either by increasing the instance of minority class or reducing the instance of the majority class. So in this approach, we use three types of sampling, oversampling, undersampling, and hybrid. In case of algorithmic level approach, we have to balance the class distribution by modifying the classifier learning, not by changing the training data set. It means the instances cannot be reduced or to be increased. We have to apply the algorithm. And in case of hybrid level approach, we can mix the both one, data level and algorithm level. Then we have the cost-sensitive learning approach. Cost-sensitive learning basically, which takes the cost of prediction errors. It means whenever we are building a machine learning model, every time we have to calculate the cost for the misclassification. This approach is based on to the cost of that model. This is the comparative analysis of previously published article. We have the type of review. Coverage of year we have 2018 to 2022. My eighth reference is for the 22 published research paper. My second reference is of 2021. Third is also 21. Ninth is also 21. And sixth is of 2020. In this paper, I have covered the topic student grade prediction, imbalanced classification, and machine learning. While in case of 2022, it was student retention, educational data mining, predictive analysis. Same in 2021, student performance prediction, machine learning. So in this way, I have find out the comparative analysis on the basis of some features. Then. There are three research questions in my paper. First is, what are the existing imbalance classification approaches and method applied for student grade prediction problem? So, as I have told you, I have used the state of art approach and I have used three levels, data level, algorithmic level and hybrid level. I have summarized the, all these. Second question is, how does the problem of class imbalance affect student grade prediction performance? So motivation is, it shows the methodological approach used in the previous study. My third question is, metrics used to appraise the performance to build for imbalance classification. So it means on which parameters I can say my model is best one. And this one is, um, this one is used to predict the academic performance when I'm using this model? This is my third question. I have used the digital library sources. I have used the Scopus paper, Web of Science paper, IEEE paper, Science Direct, Springer Link. So I have used total 43 research papers in which the contribution of Scopus papers were 19%, Web of Science was 5%, Springer Link was 23%, Science Direct was 23%, and IEEE was 30%. This is the publishing trend for imbalance classification. As we can see, since 2000, because we are not going beyond 
2018 and this is very clear from the graph that since 2018 to 2022 there is a increment in the publishing trend for imbalance classification means we have to overcome the problem of imbalance classification whenever we talk about the higher education these are my references sir any question you may ask good afternoon everyone hello hello Thank yes you, good afternoon you can ask questions am i audible yes sir you are madam you given presentation very nicely but only one question i uh, uh, keep uh, in my mind uh, what yes, source sir. of data uh, you have refer, refer for this uh, data collection data level means sir, what is actually i i have collected data from the kaggle or the U uci repository sir it is only the secondary source not the primary okay means already the work has been done on primary data no <laughs> sir actually i have not used the primary data once the model will be implemented in a very nice manner on the secondary data then i'll work with the primary data sir okay, okay. thank you that will be helpful okay uh, yeah that will be much much helpful sir thank you thank you sir okay so thank you so much uh, chitra ma'am and uh, thank you dr anirudh sir for coming over here and you know finding a valuable time uh, in your busy schedule so thank you so much uh, for being here i declare uh, that this one to one presentation is over and uh, soon everyone would be getting a, a certificate a participation and even uh, chitra ma'am and dr anirudh sir uh, you both would get uh, your certificates so soon right. my team will uh, be connecting with you thank right you. sir right Thank you sir thank you so okay, much sir. thank okay, you sir. Sir. okay